what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again we're going to be checking out the emulation performance of the all new iPad Pro now I've got the 11 inch model here but they're also offering the larger 12.6 inch I believe it is and if you're a regular view of the channel you might have seen a video I recently posted using the new iPad Air with that M1 chip running some awesome GameCube and PSP emulation Performance there was great, but when it comes to the fourth generation iPad Pro, otherwise known as the 2022 iPad Pro, we've got the brand new M2 chip, which does offer a significant boost in CPU and especially GPU performance when it comes to these Apple Silicon chips. As a lot of you already know, I'm personally an Android tablet user. We do a lot of reviews over here, and one of my favorites right now is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 or the S8 Ultra. I've got both of them in-house. Use them all the time, love the Ultra, but it is pretty huge. And one comment I always get whenever I do kind of an Apple device review or just testing out an Apple device is, you know, the price is outrageous. And yeah, of course it is. Even the Galaxy tabs are outrageously priced. The base model, S8 right now, on Amazon is $549. If you head over to Samsung's website, I believe it's $599. And taking a look at the Tab S8 Ultra, I mean, the base model on that is $1,000. So yeah, all of these tablets are definitely overpriced. And nowadays, it's kind of hard to make the argument that, you know, Apple devices are more expensive. Of course, some of them definitely are. But, you know, when you're talking about top tier tablets or phones, you're going to get expensive on both ends, Android or Apple. Now, there's still other legitimate arguments to be had, like uh, the fact that we can basically sideload anything we want on Android. And we kind of got to jump through hoops to sideload anything over here on iOS or iPad OS. So yeah, with that out of the way, I wanted to make this video to check out the emulation performance of the new iPad Pro with that M2 chip. We're going to be testing out some GameCube, some Wii, some and Sega some Saturn. PSP, and I've done a little bit of testing so far. I can tell you right now that it runs those systems absolutely amazingly. So I got the lowest end model of the new iPad Pro. It's the 11 inch model, but we still got that Apple M2 chip. Eight cores with a clock up to 3.47 gigahertz. It's also got the new Apple 10 core GPU at 1.4 gigahertz. The lower end models come with eight gigabytes of RAM, but if you opt for the larger storage variants, it'll go up to 16. But with this one, we've got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. You know, with these Apple devices, we have no micro SD card support. The display they're using here is their new Liquid Retina IPS. It's a 120 hertz display. It supports HDR 10 and Dolby Vision. It'll do up to 600 nits of brightness, and we've got a resolution of 1668 by 2388. Now, uh, those were just the basic specs. If you want to learn more, you can always head over to Apple's website. But next up, I wanted to run a few benchmarks on the new iPad Pro, and we're going to be facing this off against the most powerful Android tablet on the market right now as making this video, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. This is my go-to tablet for Android gaming, uh, cloud gaming, and emulation. And as you can see, I mean, it's got a massive 14.6 inch AMOLED display. It is absolutely beautiful, but it is coming in more expensive than the iPad Pro 11 that I have here. And keep in mind, the Tab S8 Ultra is powered by the Snapdragon Gen 1 CPU. Really great CPU when it comes to Android gaming and emulation. But uh, first up, we've got Geekbench 5. On the new iPad Pro, powered by the M2 chip, single core, 1,869, multi, 8,494. I mean, it is absolutely dominating the Snapdragon chip when it comes to single and multi-core performance. I mean, especially in multi-core. Next up, we've got a GPU benchmark here with 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme. Remember, this is the extreme version here. Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, total score, 2,451. On the M2 iPad Pro, 6,582. I was actually really surprised that this M2 chip was able to beat out that Snapdragon by so much. And the final one I ran here was Antutu. And I will tell you that I do own some gaming phones with the same chip as the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra here, that Snapdragon Gen 1. And with those phones, I've actually been able to get up into the millions with Antutu. So a lot of us already know that we're not going to be able to download emulators from the App Store on our iPhone or our iPad, but there are easy ways of getting emulators installed without having to jailbreak your device. And the one that I personally use is known as Alt Store. Basically what we're doing here is using our own free Apple developer account and we can kind of sideload applications over here. Right now I've got RetroArch and Dolphin iOS installed and Dolphin iOS is what we're going to be using to run GameCube and Wii. And I've been swapping between the stable and the beta version, given that I'm on iOS 16 with this new iPad. But yeah, I mean, it's actually worked out really well here. And we've also got RetroArch. 
And if you want to run the lower end stuff from NES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, you're going to be good to go with something like this. We've got more than enough power to run those emulators, but you know, when it comes to Alt Store, there are a few limitations. So I've got a free developer account. If you've got an iCloud or you've signed into your iPad, you also have one. We can only sideload three apps, and Alt Store actually takes up one of those. So right now, I've got those two emulators installed, Dolphin iOS and RetroArch. So by the time I want to test out PSP, I'll have to remove one of them. And for a long time now, iOS and iPadOS have supported controllers really well. I would suggest something like an Xbox controller, but the 8-BitDo Ultimate Bluetooth controller just came out, and it does work with iOS 16. It'll detect it as a Switch controller. We're going to start off here with Sega Saturn emulation, and then we'll work our way up. And for this emulator here, I'm using RetroArch and the Beetle Core. Now, if you're familiar with this core, it does take a pretty beefy CPU to run these games at full speed. But uh, I'll give you a look here. Full speed Sega Saturn emulation using the Beetle Core with RetroArch on this device. Now I don't have access to Yobasi and Shiro, which would be nice to be able to do a little bit of an upscale, but this Beetle Core is a lot more accurate than Yobasi and Shiro, and we're not getting all those graphical glitches that we would if we were using something like that emulator. This one just works out really well, but you need a high-end CPU, and since we're clocked at 3.47 GHz, we have more than enough power with this M2 chip. Now I also wanted to test another Sega Saturn game that I've never been able to get to run at full speed on an ARM device with this emulator, and that's Virtua Fighter 2. So it might not look like a really hard game to emulate, but when it comes to ARM devices and the Beetle Core, it does take a lot of power. But with this little setup here, not a problem at all for Sega Saturn. Another one I wanted to test since I was here in RetroArch was uh, MAME. More specifically, the Killer Instinct 2 version of MAME. This is one that, you know, really struggles on ARM devices, but using this MAME core here, we get some really great performance. So usually when you play this game on an Android device, you're going to be playing the Killer Instinct 2 version for, let's say, N64. But here, this is the real arcade version. Moving over to some PSP emulation, I'm using a standalone version of PPSSPP. I've just sideloaded it through Alt Store, and keep in mind, with RetroArch, there's still a ton of cores that you could run with this. There's a lot of different games we could play, but it's all lower end stuff, and I really know what kind of power this thing's putting out. So I wanted to stick to the higher end stuff, at least the higher end stuff that's available for iOS right now. And uh, here we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We're going to start off heavy here with one of the harder games to emulate, Chains of Olympus. Open GL back in. We're at 10x resolution. Upscale set to 3. Filtering x16. And this iPad didn't hiccup once, even just using that Open GL back in. Now I could always go with Vulkan, but going into this, there was really no need to swap over to Vulkan because Open GL worked. I mean, we're maxed out here with Chains of Olympus. I also tested Ghost of Sparta, and we're getting the same kind of performance here, but there was one more that I usually like to test. It is a harder game to emulate, and in some cases, you know, it does perform worse than some of these God of War games on certain devices. And that's Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. Still at 10x, totally maxed out here. Just give you a look. Everything as high as we can set it and this game also runs at 60 FPS. So, I mean, basically, as long as the PSP game is compatible with the PPSSPP emulator, you're gonna be able to max it out on this iPad with the M2 CPU. Okay, so the final emulator we're gonna be taking a look at is Dolphin iOS for GameCube and Wii. Now, it would be nice to do PS2 on this, but unfortunately, there's just not a great PS2 emulator for iOS yet. If Ether SX2 ever gets ported over, I'm sure that this would run those games really well, but right now we're kind of limited here at GameCube and Wii. We've got all the settings that we have on a normal Android device or even PC. We can upscale here, we've got save states, and you can actually run games from external storage on this iPad. We're at a 4K resolution, Vulcan back in, and everything ran at 4K except for one game, and we'll get to that in a little bit. I did have to drop it down to 1440p, it's not F-Zero GX, but we did test F-Zero GX, so yeah, it's definitely a harder one to emulate. But uh, as you can see, Time Splitters 2 running flawlessly on this device. 
Next on the list, we've got Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. And in the overworld, it's still going to run at 60 FPS. I just figured I'd go ahead and show off a little bit of battling here at 4K. And if you've never tried this game out, but are kind of into Pokemon, I would definitely give it a shot. It's a really great game for GameCube. And I think it was a little overlooked, and it still is today. Taking it up just a little bit with one of my favorite games of all time, and it just happens to be one of my favorite games to test here because it is a harder one to emulate, especially on ARM devices. Auto Modalista, running at 4K, Vulcan back in, and you know, I didn't even try any of these games at 5K, but the way it is right now, I mean, we're already kind of overdoing it with the resolution. We don't have a 4K display here, but I still wanted to see if we had enough power to push it that high. I think a lot of this stuff would run at 5K. Next on the list, Metroid Prime, another great game for GameCube, and this one here didn't have any issues at 4K with that Vulcan back in. Really enjoying playing this on the M2 iPad. I mean, this thing is definitely putting out some power. I just wish that Apple would allow us to sideload applications. You know, if we just had a little toggle from the settings that would just allow us to, you know, sideload stuff like we do on Android, then a lot of developers would jump on board. And I got a feeling that even the power we're seeing out of the M2 chip would be able to emulate Wii U games really well. Not the full library, but yeah, there'd be a lot that would be playable like they are right now. And uh, of course, we had to test out F-Zero GX, 4K, Firefield. This is just trucking right through at 60 FPS. And the final GameCube game we're going to be testing here is that one I was talking about. I had to drop this one down to 1440p. We've got Rogue Squadron 2. And I mean, the game still looks great at 1440p. And we're getting amazing performance. Every once in a while, I get a few dips when there's a lot of particles on screen. But seeing this game being emulated on a mobile device is amazing. Okay, so now I wanted to move over to some Wii games, and we're going to be using the same emulator as we know the Dolphin emulator does GameCube and Wii. And one thing that was kind of surprising was I was actually able to use external storage with this. So if I plug in this USB drive, load from external, I can play my games directly from an external drive. So we don't have to fill our internal storage up with Wii and GameCube games. I thought this was pretty cool. And all of the Wii games that I've tested so far with Dolphin iOS have run at full speed 4K with that Vulcan back in. I mean, this is really great. We're seeing the same kind of performance between GameCube and Wii with this emulator on the M2 iPad. I've got a couple more Wii games here to test, and when it comes to testing these, I usually choose games that are compatible with the GameCube controller, that way we don't have to emulate a Wii mode or anything like that. But if you did want to emulate motion controls, you could do it. I'm just personally not really into it. And the final game here, one of my favorite fighting games, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. On the M1 iPad, we were able to run this at 1440p, but here we're maxed out at 4K. So overall, the new 4th generation iPad Pro with that M2 chip is an absolute beast when it comes to emulation. I just wish that more developers were making emulators for iOS. And you know, I completely understand why not. It's basically a closed ecosystem. And of course, you know, with jailbreaks and apps like Alt Store, we can sideload stuff. But it's not as easily accessible as something like Android, and that's really what's holding this back. But I mean, there's no denying that this new M2 iPad is the most powerful tablet on the market right now. And doing these GameCube and Wii games at 4K on a mobile device is absolutely amazing. Now, would I recommend running out and buying one of these specifically for emulation? No, not by any means at all. But, you know, if you do need a really great tablet and you don't mind using iOS, then this is an awesome choice. And if you ever wanted to sideload a few emulators here and there, you could always get it done without jailbreak. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you'd like to see anything else running on this new iPad Pro, just let me know in the comments below. I actually have tested out a bunch of native iOS games. I just didn't know if there was really an interest in it. I can make a video like that or basically anything else you want to see on this unit as long as we can get it installed. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these new iPad Pros up, I will leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.